Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unmarked and Reviews on How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Freezer 36A RGB onto the AM4 stroke AM5 platform. They are extremely similar and they use the same retention mechanism. So, yeah, if you're on AM4 or AM5, this is going to be absolutely fine for you. I'll go through step by step, showing you how it's all done, how to connect up the headers, etc., RGB, all that kind of good stuff. And hopefully by the end of it, you should have a fully working installed processor cooler ready to go and uh, yeah, do whatever you want to and hopefully get some good results out of. But before we do that, let's take a look and see what we actually need. So you ideally want something to put your motherboard onto if you're doing this before you assemble your system. If you're actually assembling this in your PC, I would strongly suggest if you can, just lay your PC down flat so the motherboard is in this orientation. You can, of course, with M5, now mount with it like this because the back plate won't fall off, so that's absolutely fine. It's just a little bit more difficult to do, so I would suggest if you can, lay your PC down so you've got good access, and obviously gravity is going to be your friend. Now, things you're going to need, a Phillips PH2 screwdriver, or very similar. You'll also need some of the accessories in the bag, so you'll need the four gray mounting plastic spacers. You'll also need the two AM4 stroke AM5 brackets. And also you'll need the four fully threaded screws. Now there's two sets of screws in the box, one of which has a kind of non-threaded collar. Those are for Intel. You want the ones which have got the thread all the way through, which you're probably seeing from a close up I filmed a little bit earlier. Now Arctic do actually include some thermal paste, so you can use that. They include MX6, which is absolutely great paste if you want to use that or alternatively use whatever you want. The choice is yours. If you're on M5, potentially you might want to pick up one of these little uh, paste guards. They're actually quite handy. And if you're doing a lot of swapping in and then swapping out, testing of processors and cooling, then it's a good idea just to keep your socket a little bit cleaner. Other than that, that is pretty much it. We're ready to go. So let's uh, get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to remove the two standard retention brackets, which are at the top and the bottom of the socket. Just use your PH2 screwdriver, remove the four screws and the little plastic retainers. And I would suggest putting those somewhere safe, ideally back in your motherboard box, or maybe if you're keeping the box for your cooler, stick it in there, just in case you ever need to swap these back out. Next, we want to grab our four gray spacers and put one over each one of the protrusions from the board. That's those screw threads. The word protrusion. These brackets, now you'll notice with the brackets, there is a flat side, which hopefully is picking up on the camera. And also there's a side with like a channel. And you actually want this with the channel facing up. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive because it actually looks nicer the other way round. But if you don't do it this way, the screw threads won't match up very well. So just make sure you put those with the channel facing up and the thread facing outward. And you probably have to hold it in place whilst you get at least one of the screws started. Otherwise it's gonna have a slight tendency to uh, fall off. So you can do this pretty much up all the way. If you loosen it off slightly, it still gives you a little bit of wiggle room so you can slide this around. So if you are doing this in a vertical position, you can kind of put that on, sort of hold that in place and then twist the bracket over. So I'm gonna get my second screw and just pop that through the hole. And then I can do this one up firmly. You'll feel there is a kind of like a hard stop when it's all the way in. And then just repeat exactly the same on the other side. And you want it so that it is wider. So the, these will obviously fit in both ways. So if you do it this way, it's clearly it's covering the processor, so that's no good. So. This is the way you want to have it spaced. So again, grab your screw, and get it started by hand if you wish. Do it up lightly so it still has a bit of movement there. So you can adjust the bottom. We'll put that screw through. Get it started and just tighten it up so it's nice and snug. So at this point now, we can apply some thermal paste. So I'm just gonna put a, a blob in the middle and uh, a few extra little dots just to help things along. This is something which always triggers people, so feel free to let me know how you feel about my paste application in the comments section. The next part of this, we're gonna actually get the cooler ready. So from the box, the cooler comes with the fans pre-installed. So we're just gonna pop those off, they just pull off 
front and back. And also very important, don't forget to remove the plastic film from the base. And if you want to, you can give that a clean with some isopropyl alcohol. I'll put some links in the video description so you can buy some of that should you wish to. There is also a mounting method. So there is actually the Arctic logo on the top there. So depending on the orientation of your build, that obviously you need to consider when you're lining things up. So in this particular instance, we are gonna be having it like this. So what we wanna do is to first aim these screws here towards the section here and here. So one screw either side. Generally, if you line up one side first of all on a bit of an angle and then drop the other side into place, it should fit very nicely. With the screws, what I tend to do is to do a couple of reverse turns. So here, click, and then do one, two, just to get it started. And then you can go ahead onto the other side and do exactly the same. There's the click and a couple of turns. So then just do opposing sides, one, two, three, one, two, three. It doesn't have to be exact, but you don't want to do it all in one go. Just do it bit by bit to even out the tension. You'll get to a point where there is pretty much a hard stop and it won't go any further. So that is the actual installation of the cooler done. So now we can attach the fans. So the fans, when it comes to mounting them, you'll notice there are these little screws which are already pre-assembled. So these go into these receivers here. Now what I would suggest to do is to make sure that your wires are angled in a way which is suitable for you when you're actually wiring things up. So ideally this side of your motherboard, so your cable management could be here. And all you wanna do is to get the fan pretty much level with the top and snap, 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 and snap. So that's the four lugs in, so that is ready to go. Just give it a quick spin make sure it's okay. And then you can do exactly the same on the back side and with the back one. You'll notice the back one because these little screws are in the front. So front is back and back is front. It's as clear as mud. And again, with your cables, ideally one at the bottom there, one at the top end, so you can take it out the top of your motherboard when you're doing your cable management. Again, line up the screws with those little holes. And if you get one started in the top, there we go. And those just snap into position. So we've got a rear fan blowing outwards towards the exhaust. And we've got our front fan there for our intake. So the next thing to do is to actually wire up the connectors. So I'm actually going to put the addressable RGB ones out of the way for now, temporarily, because we're going to concentrate, first of all, on the PWM. So on our particular motherboard, we've got our fan header, which is tucked in there, a little bit tucked away there for me, but you can hopefully see it. So that's our CPU fan header. This is the one we want to use. So if you get your two fans or two fan cables rather, because they can daisy chain, we're just going to take the female from the rear fan. And then we've got the male section for the front fan, pop those together. Then all we need to do is to put this one single cable into our CPU fan header, which is just here. and push that into place. When it comes to the cable management, you can kind of do whatever you want. I'm just gonna stick those down there for now, just tuck them out of the way. That's absolutely fine. So now we can move on to the addressable RGB wiring. So push these back over. For us here, this motherboard, the addressable RGB port is in this far side here. So it's a three pin, five volt addressable RGB. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So this one is actually closer to this side. So this one's further away, so it makes sense to daisy chain from here. So what you want to do is to pull off the cap for the front one and then attach the other cable there. So pass that into there. And then we've got one connection there, which can then go onto our motherboard. And there we go. That is the addressable RGB on there. Again, you can do whatever you want with your cable management. This is probably going to be all hidden at the top of your motherboard anyway, but essentially that is it. So we've got two fans, two lots of PWM, two lots of addressable RGB, all daisy chain through and connected to just one header on the motherboard for each PWM and addressable RGB. Okay, so there you go. 
there is our CPU cooler installed and actually I think it does look uh, very nice. Very pleased, very nice looking cooler this and at a pretty decent price at the moment. Again, if you've uh, not bought one of these and you're just watching this video out of uh, interest, curiosity, highly recommended it. It's a reduced price. I picked this one up for about £24 on Amazon. Links will be in the video description. There's a black one and white one. There's a black one with addressable RGB and there's a white one with addressable RGB and there's various prices starting from about 20 quid. So yeah, pretty decent, pretty easy to install as you've seen and uh, testing will be happening next. So this is gonna be our test platform for the review. So if you wanna see how, how this actually performs and what it's like in the real world, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the chime button, that way you'll be notified of future video releases. I think that's gonna wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.